Okay, let's go ahead and get started, everybody. My name is Don Klemmer. I'm a sales engineer with Parallels. And today we're going to be talking about Parallels Remote Application Server, or RAS as we call it. Uh, what's new in version 18.1? We're going to start with an introduction to Parallels, just in case you haven't heard of us. Then we will go, very quickly go through some of the Parallels RAS key benefits. And then we'll talk about uh, what's new in version 18.1 and a little bit about what was new in our previous release before that version 18. We'll do a quick demo. And then I've got Q&A down here at the end. But honestly, if you just ask your questions as we go along, just go ahead and put them in the chat window. That way we can answer them when they go along. You can um, and take care of them then. And you can ask them when they're fresh in your minds. So you can save them up at the end if you'd like, but probably easiest if you just kind of ask as we go. So if anybody hasn't heard of Parallels before, we're a global company. We've been around for quite some time. Um, we operate in over 140 countries with uh, 5,000 plus channel partners around the world. And we have a large, large number of customers that trust us, including 20% of the Fortune 500 and over 7 million individuals, which equates to over 50,000 different businesses using Parallels products worldwide. Most people have heard of the company, Parallels, because of uh, the product Parallels Desktop for Mac. Run Windows on the Mac, right? It's a quick and easy way to run uh, Windows on your Mac without having to reboot. You run them in parallel with each other, get it? Um, although you can run other operating systems as well. So if you want to run Linux on your Mac, you certainly can do that as well. And recently, we've extended that to a product called Parallels Desktop for Chrome OS. So essentially, if you've got a relatively high-end Chromebook device, you could run Windows or another operating system on a Chromebook as well. Parallels Access is a utility uh, product that allows you to remotely get into your personal workstation from anywhere, whether it's a Mac or a uh, Windows PC. It's got a really great mobile interface. So if you're just walking around and you suddenly realize you need to do something on your home computer, you whip out your phone, uh, your smartphone, and you can get to it from there really great intuitive interface. Uh, you can make very precise mouse clicks with your finger. You can just use all the native touch gestures. You don't have to carry around a, a mouse or anything in your pocket with your phone. It's literally just your phone or your tablet or, or whatever you want. And then uh, we also have the ability to integrate with some other products for uh, Mac management to manage those Macs uh, for business environments in that scenario. Uh, Parallels Toolbox is a nice set of utilities of a lot of different tasks. You know, if you want to download videos, you can also put your um, your Mac in, or Windows into what we call uh, presentation mode. So if you're giving, I don't know, a webinar, that way you won't get uh, interrupted by alerts and pop-ups on your desktop, for instance. And then, of course, today we're going to be talking about Parallels Remote Application Server, Parallels RAS. It's an all-in-one remote application and VDI solution delivering a virtual desktop, virtual apps from anywhere, from any device, right? So providing and enabling remote access for your end users. Very quickly, some of the key benefits. Well, it starts with the end user experience. It gives you a great experience for your end users so they're happy working in a remote type of environment and can be productive. It's got tremendous... Um, security capabilities. It's very flexible and easy to set up and deploy. You can start extremely small with just a single system. Literally, you can set it up in just a few minutes going, uh, taking the defaults, next, next, next. You can be publishing applications off a remote desktop server very, very fast. Uh, one of my favorite comments is when we're kind of doing a POC, I have a lot of customers that just are almost in disbelief that they're that far along in the product publishing and delivering applications over say a web interface just so quick in like 20, 30 minutes. Really quick and easy to deploy. You can start small, you can scale up. There's no advanced enterprise platinum plus data center edition. So if you want to do VDI, if you want to do remote desktop services or terminal services using applications or a shared desktop, you can do that. We can integrate with the Azure virtual desktop, which I'll talk about auto scaling, all sorts of things that you can do, and it's all very attractively priced. Like I said, it's licensed only by concurrent user. So there's no, um, as I said, there's no Advanced Enterprise Platinum Plus Data Center Edition. So you can use any of these features that you'd like. You don't have to make a decision about, should I go this route or that route? Use the route that's best for you, or you can even have different users uh, going down different paths. You know, your power users get VDI, other folks get just applications, whatever it is that works best for you guys. So, oh, and support's included too as well as upgrades. So when we release a new product like version 18.1, you're entitled to go to the latest and greatest as soon as you're ready. Okay, so let's take a look at what's new and some of the new features in version 18.1. 
Uh, there's a whole ton here. You can kind of read through the slide if you want. The ones we're going to focus on today, we're going to look at kind of the combined user session management. I'll explain what I mean about that and why you should care about it. Dynamic session resolution updates, update is a way to quickly resize the uh, windows that you're using, like a Windows remote desktop. It actually looks really cool and it, it, talking about it doesn't do it justice. You kind of have to see it. So we'll do a demo on that in a little bit. Uh, Self-service remote PC access, what's the heck is that? I'll explain that. That's actually a very cool feature that um, you might be interested in. And then uh, bi-directional clipboard and file transfer control, uh, we'll kind of get into that as well. And I'm also going to talk about and show a little demo of the uh, Azure Virtual Desktop. Okay, so combined user session management, what does this mean and why do you care about it? Well, uh, what we did in the interface is we took all the different places that you can manage sessions and put them under one thing, right? Okay, great. What's so great about that other than, you know, um, just it's all in one spot. Well, think about this, right? Because Parallelis is an all-in-one solution. If I've got terminal servers or the more modern name remote desktop servers and I'm delivering up applications or desktops from those, I can now manage those user sessions from within the Parallels RAS um, administrator interface. I also, from the same place, can manage VDI sessions, you know, right click, log off stuck sessions, reboot a remote desktop, uh, anything of that. You, I could even do some shadowing and remote control depending on the type of client that they're in. Any of that stuff I can do through that. And I also can do that if uh, through the Azure Virtual Desktop. So I can now do that in all three of those. And finally, I also can do it over like a remote PC. So if somebody's working from home and they're just literally remoting into their computer at work on their desktop, I can also remote into that and help them. Um, or excuse me, at least um, do some session management for that with them. So from a single pane of glass, I can do all of those things with one product without changing my licensing or anything like that. So really, really cool. And then even beyond that, this feature actually came out in version 18.0, but I can't talk about uh, session management without it adding this in as well, we've got all these advanced metrics and user experience evaluator. You know, when we work in IT, you always get calls from end users complaining that their connection's slow or something's going on. This helps you look at that and see if they're just, uh, you know, complaining or if they've actually got something going on. You can kind of look through that and you can say, yep, your session's running slow. It's because your network's slow at your house, right? There's nothing I can do about that. You can just tell them the network's slow because it's running fine on our end. Or maybe you take a look at this and you say, oh, huh, what do you know? Um, they are experiencing some latency and it's kind of in our network here. Or, um, or uh, you know, you look at that and you're, you're looking and you say, hmm, yeah, we've got some spikes or something going on or limits in the bandwidth or who knows, right? It is our problem. Maybe we should add some more resources or something on our end to kind of speed that up. It kind of helps you troubleshoot. It obviously can't uh, tell you whether the problem is end to end, but you can look at it and you can say, yeah, actually the network is kind of slow. And then you can evaluate your network and you can say it is us or it's not us or something like that. But at least narrows it down, whether it's like a server problem or, or who knows. So you can actually give them some, a real answer and have some real data to act on. The self-service remote PC access is kind of a long title. Remote PCs, all that is is a feature within Parallels that allows you to get into your desktop securely from home or from any device. You know, I talked about Parallels Access, accessing, accessing your personal workstation from your phone or your tablet or something. This is a way to do it from a corporate standpoint securely, of course, over a web interface or from another computer, like at your home computer or something, or on your iPhone or tablet or Chromebook or whatever, right, that you can get into this and actually control your PC at home. These technologies have been around for a while. This has been in the product forever, the ability to remote into that. But all of a sudden last year, for some reason, surprisingly, this technology, which was our, our feature, which really wasn't very heavily used, just took off. Why? Well, we had a pandemic, right? Suddenly everybody had to work from home almost instantly. And unless a, and unless a business or a organization actually had the server compute power to switch to a remote desktop server or terminal server environment or do VDI or something, you know, what are you going to do? You can only get hardware in so fast to do this. And so a quick, easy way was, well, they've got a physical desktop on their desktop. Instead of having them take that home and us try to troubleshoot and do all this stuff remotely, why don't we just leave it here where we can work it 
and then we'll set up a RAS server, which doesn't take too much horsepower or bandwidth or anything like that. And then you just work from home with whatever you got, and you can get into your workstation at work, and then everything's available to it because your workstation's sitting in the office and it's all good. So we could securely broker that kind of connection. <coughs> so it was very, very popular all of a sudden. What we've done, though, is we realized that, okay, so it was really popular. It's really easy to do and set up. You just need to deploy an agent to it. You need to add it and then you know set the permissions. But it is something because you're doing one at a time, right? This person, I've got to deploy an agent to their PC and then I've got to change the permissions and publish it and make sure that only they can access it. And then I go to the next one and the next one and the next one. It just can add up, right? Just because of the nature of it, because it's all onesie twosies and everyone's got different permissions to get into their own PCs. Well, this is a way where they can actually do it themselves. You as an admin decide that, okay, yeah, this person is going to be working from home. So it's not like they just can do this on their own, go rogue kind of speak. So you send them an email and they get this little email with some uh, code and instructions. And they take that and they run it on their own workstation at work themselves. They just run it and it automatically provisions and adds it to Parallels RAS. It sets the permissions and puts the agents on it. So they go ahead and run that themselves. They go home and suddenly when they log into the web interface or the Parallels client or whatever, hey, there's my PC at work. I can now get into it. And so it takes some of the admin burden off of you guys. You still have a lot of control about what they can and can't do and all this other stuff. But it's just that initial setup and, and so forth um, makes it a lot easier for you all to, uh, for admins to kind of work. Okay. This one also is cool because, like I said, you know, you get different use cases for different users, right? Different classes of users need different things. Maybe your power users need VDI. Maybe other people just need some applications from a remote desktop server. Parallels lets you do all of this with a single license, single pane of glass. And then we've added to that by getting into Azure Virtual Desktop integration. So if you have a use case for this for certain users, you can now integrate the Azure VD management into Parallels. You don't have to have Parallels and then Azure. You can kind of tie it all together so you're just doing one thing if you need to do that. If you haven't heard of Azure Virtual Desktop before, well, it's because Microsoft changed the name. So I still call it WVD or Windows Virtual Desktop myself. So as we go through the demo, you'll probably hear me saying that quite a bit. But it's the same thing. It's Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows Virtual Desktop. It's just been a rebranding from Microsoft, but it's the same thing, okay? And then you get all the, um, so if I flip on, you kind of get all the parallels benefits to this as well, right? So I talked about the single pane of glass management where you can now, you don't have to come up with a new management interface. You can manage your VDI, your RDSH, and your Azure uh, virtual desktop all in one. You can, um, so you get that unified system administration, that session management that I talked about earlier still exists here. Uh, we can do the auto scaling on Azure, or if you're just doing on-prem VDI, you can do it with both, both simultaneously. You can run multiple hypervisors, on-prem, off-prem, cloud thing for VDI or Azure VD or whatever. And then um, you can do that kind of auto-scaling where it'll auto-deploy the resources for you. And then you're just essentially setting up permissions and who has control of what. Um, you also have access to local resources. Right? So if somebody's working from home and they're doing a remote desktop, whether it's an Azure Virtual Desktop or VDI or Remote Desktop Session Desktop, RDS Desktop, um, you know, they might want to have access to their local systems. So you can, Parallels has a universal printing solution built right into it that works right out of the box, right? You're an admin in IT for an organization. You have no idea what kind of printer is sitting in somebody's house. You don't have to care, right? It works automatically out of the box. Um, you can turn that off too, by the way, of course. So if you don't want somebody printing, you can be able to shut that uh, down so that they can't print locally. Or you can just let it go when they can. In fact, there's a whole set of granular control policies that you can do, and it's based on just Active Directory security groups. So you've probably already got those existing. You know, This class of users, sure, they can upload and download files, they can print, they can do everything. These other people, you have no, no local printing for you. Um, no file transfer. I don't want you transferring files up or down or anything like that. So it gets very, very um, granular in terms of what you can and can't control. Uh, if they're coming from a Windows workstation, we can actually do session pre-launch, which means, I don't know, let's say everybody logs in at 8 a.m. on Monday morning and you have a login storm you're dealing with, right? Stress on your compute environment because of all the logins and then um, users have to wait for everything to process before the system settles down, before they can get logged in and actually working. Well, with session pre-launch, 
which is a feature in Parallels. Uh, we actually have artificial intelligence that figures this out for you if you turn it on. All right, you can turn it off or on, so it's up to you. But if you turn it on, it'll figure out, hey, you know what, at 8 a.m. on Monday morning, everybody hits the login button and look what happens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start spacing those logins out. We'll do some logins on behalf of the users a little bit early. Maybe we'll start at like 6.37, depends how many users you have. We'll log them on a few at a time, a few at a time, a few at a time, and that way we spread them out and you don't have a login storm. And then when your end users show up and they all hit the logon button at 8 a.m. on the dot on Monday morning, well, guess what? They're just connecting to a session that's already established. So they're up and running very, very quickly. When they're ready to log in, they log in. So very cool stuff. Um, accelerated file redirection, I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute. So I'll kind of just set that aside. But there's all sorts of features that you get with Parallels and it all integrates as well into the Azure VD or WVD if you like the old name. Dynamic session resolution update. Again, this will be a little bit easier to see in a demo, but what's really happening here is, is you resize the window like a desktop. You know, this works again on Windows workstations. It dynamically resizes it very quickly. So if you have, I don't know, an um, ultra widescreen monitor and you want to put your desktop on one half and maybe a browser on the other half, Right, your remote desktop on one half and your local browser on the other half, you could do that. And you just drag and resize and it gets exactly like you like it. Maybe the desktop takes up two thirds in the monitor and the, the browser takes up one third or, or however you want to do that, dragging it around. But it resizes it so you see the full desktop in the appropriate resolution for the window you, that you do. And it does that dynamically on the fly very, very quick. So I got a demo that I'll, um, I'm gonna actually show you this because seeing it uh, is much, much better than just me kind of just trying to describe it. Bidirectional clipboard and file transfer control. This is actually kind of neat. Um, I was talking about the granular uh, controls that we have about, and you can see the policies in here that you can set um, control, like whether you can, um, um, you know, do local file transfer, whether I can reach my local file system or not. We can do that here um, very easily um, through the policies as well as plug-in devices and local printing and all that. But one thing that's pretty cool is you now have the option to control the direction that they transfer files, right? So perhaps you will let them transfer files into the workstation remote uh, environment, right? Their, let's just say their application and remote desktop server, right? But not down. So if they do a little bit of scratch work and they're thinking, hey, this would be really good for my product how, or for my project that I'm working on, how can I get this into my uh, remote workstation because I work off remote applications? Well, you can just locally go down, access that, and then drag it up there, right? Copy it, drag it using uh, drag and drop if that's enabled in the application or what's, uh, whatnot, because we do support drag and drop from client to server or server to client. Um, so that'll work, right? But you don't want people transferring stuff off because you know, once it's up here, we got financial data, we got other stuff. I can't have you transferring data off the uh, server for security reasons. So you can say in only, but not out. Or maybe the reverse is. You know what, I don't care what you download, but you're not transferring anything up. You may put up some malware or something on my environment for all I know. So nothing comes in, but you can save it locally if you want. So you could do something like that, or you can say nobody transfers files in any direction whatsoever, or everybody can transfer files up and down. It depends what's best for you and your environment. So you have that kind of control now within Parallels RAS. Uh, the Parallels client for Mac on Apple M1 and Intel chips, you might have heard Apple has a new really high spit fast uh, Mac computers that they've released based on that M1 chipset. Guess what? Um, that works with Parallels too. It's a whole new uh, um, processor architecture, but we've ported our client so that it works on the M1 chipset so you're ready to go. And I actually have a quick demo for this too, so I'll show you how that actually, you can actually see it running on the M1. Very, very quick. So very cool technology. But when we mean every device from uh, or access your remote uh, environment from any device, we mean it. So even with the M1 chip that's brand new, we've got you covered there. And this kind of going back to that file transfer I was kind of talking about earlier, where you can do kind of that bi-directional up and down. You may have noticed when you RDP into a remote computer that it's, you know, you go file, save as, and then you go down to C and then you try to put it in a folder or something somewhere on your local workstation. It takes forever to browse that local file tree, especially if you've got anything that's kind of extensive. And then the transfer down is really slow, right? Really slow. So you go save as, and then you just sit there and watch. It's, it's just so slow. We've speeded that up. We've got this new thing called uh, drive cache enablement. 
and it allows it to go really, really fast. And I have a little demo where I kind of uh, have a picture of us doing one without it and one with it, and you can see the speed differential. This is actually was available in 18.0, but it's so cool that I'm kind of keeping it here for 18.1 because we, we've really sped that up. So you can kind of see the demo. So we'll get to that in just one moment. And um, there are some additional features in here. I've kind of covered some of these as I've been talking about it, such as the granular uh, features, but we do have different types of uh, multi-factor authentication that you can control and integrate with. I've got support for this YubiKey, um, some different tenant broker things, um, and so forth, and just updates on, on versions that we support from our, our coming of our partners, whether hypervisors or workstation partners or both. So I'll let you kind of read through this on its own. I don't want to read everything because we've just got so much to cover today as it is. Um, but all that's in there. And then uh, here's also a big list of the features in version.18.1 that were improved there that you can kind of go through. So as you read through this, if you're not sure what some of these are, like uh, multiple halbs with advanced management, what does that mean? Well, a halb is our high availability load balancer. It's a virtual appliance. It does load balancing. It's included in the solution, so it doesn't cost extra, but it's a virtual appliance, so it's a separate download. If you're interested or wondering what any of these things are, just give us a contact and um, we can run a free trial. We've got POCs. And the POCs, the free trials that we have, are not crippled in any way whatsoever. So if you're thinking, wow, I'd really like to test uh, uh, SAML and that pre-launch and all that, yeah, you certainly can do it, right? We limit the uh, proof of concept only by time. It's good for 30 days. And then it's 50 users right out of the box. If you need to adjust that a little bit, you can uh, contact your sales team and they can help. Um, but we have all of this available in there that you can kind of take a try. And there's also all sorts of information on the Parallels website about it as well. Okay, um, and then of course the greatest compliment we can get is coming from our customers. Like I said, RAS is easy to use. Um, you can scale down and start very small to a single server, and then it's really easy to take that single server and scale it out to multiple farms. Um, and then you can combine, like I said, the publication or the availability of remote desktop services, VDI, remote PC, and others, which also now includes Azure Virtual Desktop is a single entry to the enterprise workspace. So it's a great solution for all sizes. Um, Udo Janssen here kind of had a really great quote that I've been kind of taking through, but it just hits on just all the highlights that we have. Thank you so much for that. And then um, Parallels Remote Application Server, another testimonial about how easy it was to deploy. Like I said, you can be up and running just at a basic level in 30 minutes. And then you can take that very, very quickly um, and expand out. So thanks, Brandon Patton there. So, okay, and with all that, uh, I think we've done enough of the PowerPoint. I think uh, you guys have probably had enough of it. I certainly have. So let's kind of go ahead and kind of get into the demo and um, we'll dig into that. So I want to show you kind of the session management, how that works. Then we'll get into the self-service remote PC. I want to show you what that process is like. I want to show you what the end user experience is like to access an Azure virtual desktop. And then, uh, of course, I've been talking and talking about this dynamic session resolution in the accelerated file retrieval. I'll definitely show you that. And then I'll show you the client itself running on the uh, M1 chip on a Mac. So let's get to the demo. Uh, just to kind of level set everybody, if you haven't seen this before, this is the web interface for Parallels. It's built right into the server. The web server is, and it works pretty much right out of the box. Uh, this is the default look and feel. But you can customize it so that you can kind of pick and choose the colors and the logos and put your own branding on there, right? So your uh, end users feel like they're logging into their own environment. I'm on a Mac, obviously, but this client uh, works on pretty much any device. Uh, most people are still using Windows workstations. You can use Chromebooks, Linux devices, thin clients. Um, mobile devices such as iPads and Android tablets and mobile phones, of course, anything pretty much. We've got a client that runs on this. The web interface can work in two different fashions. One of them is you can use a clientless uh, look and feel. So essentially, your end users simply log into the web interface and then they're presented with exactly the apps or the virtual desktop or whatever it is that you're providing them. Um, but they don't have to install anything on their uh, workstation whatsoever. So it just kind of works, right? So if I give you an idea of that, I'll go ahead and launch an application here. Let's just launch uh, Microsoft Word, right? Okay, there we go. Here's Word. And if you look down in the taskbar of the browser down here, 
you'll notice that I already had PowerPoint open from a previous session. So I can kind of go back and forth. I can multitask um, and do that. But you will notice that it's not putting it down in the dock on my Mac environment. It's running in the kind of the taskbar of the browser. And that's because I'm running clientless. So it's highly, highly convenient, but it doesn't quite have all the bells and whistles that uh, uh, using the Parallels client in conjunction with this would have. However, I can do a lot of things with this. Not only can I work, but if I go up here and file and then print, um, you'll see if you look real closely here, it says 2x universal printer. So local printing works. It'll print right over to what it is to whatever the default printer on my Mac is, and it just kind of works right out of the box there. So you just go file, print, print, and the Parallels Universal uh, Printing takes over. You don't have to do anything as an administrator to configure this. You can shut off local printing, of course, if you want, um, but it would take that out, um, but it would make that available for them. If I do want to transfer files on and off the server, upload and download, I have this Chevron down here in the lower right, and this is an upload and excuse me, an upload and a download feature here. And essentially it uses the browser functionality to move files off. So if I had a file that I wanted to move from, from, the, uh, from the server down to my local workstation, I would click the download and it would put it in my downloads directory just like I downloaded a file off the internet using my browser. But I also can upload files from the uh, local workstation and going up as well. And uh, like I said, using policies, which I'll show you in just a minute when we switch over to the server side, I can of course turn that off. And now I can even direct it so that you can upload but not download or download but not upload. Okay. And then if I wanted to do VDI in this too, I've got a VDI desktop right here and I'll go ahead and launch that. And this again is still in clientless mode. And as you can see, here's the Windows workstation and I adjusted the resolution just so we can kind of see it in this tab. But you can see that it actually is running just in a tab on the browser, which is not highly useful. But you'll notice this little toolbar over here on the right, where I do have the upload, download, I've got the ability to use the clipboard so I can copy small amounts of text to the clipboard and then local or the reverse direction, assuming I allow that. And then right here is the full screen mode. And I click that and then suddenly I have a full screen uh, Windows desktop that just works and I can you know, I can do with it whatever I want. But at the end of the day, I am still just running in a tab in the browser, okay? Now, if I switch modes here, there is also a piece of software called the Parallels Client, and you'll see me kind of access that as I go through some other pieces of the demo. But um, you can use that in conjunction with the browser. So the very first time I log in, the Parallels web interface will prompt the end user to download the software for the client. It's going to feel like a browser plug-in to them. It's not, but it'll feel like it. They'll download it. They'll go next, 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 and then close it. You don't have to do any configuration. It just needs to be present on the system. And then when I'll go ahead and launch apps, like I'll just launch Excel this time. Okay, ready? And there we go. This time it breaks it out of the browser. So I can actually minimize the browser, and I now have a seamless Excel interface. Right? It's in its own window that I can move around and do things. And you notice up here, it's actually the Windows version of Excel. I'm not running the Mac version of Excel and, uh, and putting a fast one on you. I'm actually streaming a Windows version of Excel to my Macintosh. Okay. okay, and this gives me a few more bells and whistles as well. So not only do I have uh, in its own seamless window, so now I can launch a couple apps and put one on one screen and one on the other. If I launched a full VDI desktop, it actually would treat my multi-monitor like multiple discrete screens. So if I had two monitors, it would put par um, it would give me one discrete screen on one monitor and one on the other, just as if I was running it locally. That's kind of hard to show in a, uh, a webinar window. But the other thing too is I have more uh, access to my local devices. So now if I go to File, and print, notice it says actually the name of the printer itself. And so you can see I've got the printer name by my username by Parallels, and then here's a Xerox printer, that was an Epson one. Printer name by my username by Parallels. So instead of presenting just the default printer, which is what happens in clientless mode, I now have access to all my local printers. It enumerates them when I logged in. And again, this works right out of the box without you having to do anything on the admin side to do that, it just works. Uh, unless you want to turn it off so they can't print locally. Of course, you can do that. 
And then if I went to file and save as, I actually could see my local hard disks uh, if that's available too, right? File, save as, and if I was on a Windows workstation, I would see C on my local computer. Um, on a Mac, if I actually had my permissions set, which I, I don't at the moment, but I could actually browse my local uh, Mac file system, whatever directories that I set for that. So a much more uh, seamless experience that you get um, using the Parallels client. And to wrap up, kind of showing you how seamless this is, if I was to click Minimize, notice that it put the uh, Excel icon down in the dock, and you can see the little Parallels um, overlay icon there so that your end users are aware that it's a remote app and perhaps not get confused with one that's local. So you can just click on this and restore the window, and I'm right back, and you can minimize it and it puts in the dock just as if you were local. So let's go ahead and switch gears here. Okay, so this is the RAS admin console here, and I'm sitting here at the uh, start section. By the way, just so you know when I'm navigating, these icons up and down the left-hand side is the main menu system. So I'm just up at start, and you can see that you've got a bunch of quick, easy wizards here to get running. So you can get up and running real quick. You can add an RD session host, you can deploy a Windows Virtual Desktop, you can publish applications or resources, and invite users right from here. Just bing, 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 right down the wizard thing. Most things are under the farm category. If you go to farm and then you can do things in here like control the environment. If I go to publishing agent, publishing agent is what we call the controller, the connection broker. It just installs by default. It's got its own built-in local database. You don't have to futz around with external SQL con uh, configurations or anything like that. It just goes. Um, you have one out of the box right here that works great. If you'd like to add a second one for redundancy, um, our action buttons are these little blue pluses up here, and I could just click on the blue plus, point to a server, we'll push the agent out, the databases will sync up, and suddenly you have two, and they're active, active, and work together. So the environment is really easy and intuitive to work like this, and then these little check boxes, of course, that pop up everywhere are little shortcuts that'll do that. So um, if you've got a smaller environment up to perhaps about 500 users, if you leave this checked, it'll install a, a gateway with the publishing agent. That's the publishing agent, again, is the controller. The gateway is what end users connect to. Um, it'll turn on the HTML5 interface, and then it'll even configure the Windows firewall rules on the remote target system so that you, uh, you, know, you don't have to do that manually if you'd like to use the Windows firewall. So very intuitive to kind of go through here um, and set it up and work. And you can see here's the universal printing that's built in here. Um, that works again just right out of the box. Uh, to make things available, you just go to publishing. Here's a little blue plus this time down in the lower left with add. And you can see that we can publish applications. You can give desktops, whether it's a remote desktop, session host desktop, VDI, Azure VD desktop, all of that's available here. And there's a bunch of other things that we can make available to the end users as well. Um, just kind of getting down here very quickly, just because we have limited time. Uh, from a connection standpoint, this is what users are authenticating with and how they get into the system. So username, password from Active Directory right here is the first line of defense, but we do have two-factor authentication built into the product as well. So we can integrate with all these providers. Uh, whether it's Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, Duo, uh, Radius, actually. Most things use Radius under the covers. So if you have a third-party product that's not listed here, if it's Radius-based, almost assuredly it'll work. And most things are Radius-based. So we can integrate with that. And then a lot of these uh, granular controls that we have are all in these settings right here. Effectively, you know, if you're in the office, we won't challenge you. If you're not in the office, I don't know where you are. You're, you're not going to be challenged. If you're in this security group, you won't get challenged because you're not access, accessing anything that's real sensitive. If you're in the finance group, well, heck yeah, we're challenging you. Or, I mean, you can even leave it so that everybody is challenged all the time. I mean, we've got two-factor all turned on all the time. So you've got great control over that. In policies, these are the granular policies control that I was talking about. You create one, again, using the little blue plus up here. And then it applies to um, Active Directory users and groups right here. So I've got the uh, 80 users uh, pretty much. I have this policy set to control everybody. The reason I came in here is this is where you can turn things on and off. But if I go down just a little bit under local devices, you can see this file transfer. So if I check this box, that means I'm applying the policy. And then over here is that bi-directional control that I talked about. OK, you can transfer stuff from your local workstation to the server, or VDI instance, or whatever, but not the other way. Or you can go from the remote environment down, or you can go to both, or nobody does anything. 
So you can pick and choose based on what security group that they belong to, what they can do or cannot do. Or you can set it so that everybody gets the same policy. It's kind of up to you. Okay, what I really wanted to get into here, that was just a quick, real high-level tour, was the session management. So if I click on the sessions button, which is nice and easy to find, or category, I can see everybody that's logged in, and I don't have too many people logged in at once, but I've got all sorts of information just right across the top here. You know, how long have they been logged in? This is what their uh, experience is like in, in uh, milliseconds. If they're using TCP or UDP. Most of mine are TCP, but um, because I'm coming in over a web interface, but UDP actually would speed that up. And then if you scroll on down or take this bar down to the bottom and slide over, you can see you get all sorts of information about whether they're using some sort of profile manager that we're aware of, the bandwidth, the operating system that's running on their workstation, they're getting a lot of disconnect, reconnects, what's kind of going on here through this. All right. And then I can get even farther because if I right click on any one of these, I can disconnect the session, I can log them off, I can send a message. I could request remote control, depending again on type of the workstation they're in, if that supports that. Um, but I also can kind of get down even farther and show, you know, kind of the uh, more information here. So I can go to show information and I can see, ooh, all sorts of things just kind of summed up here very quickly. So if a single user is calling you up instead of kind of scrolling around the bar and highlighting it like I did, I could just double click on it to go into the session information and give it kind of quick once over to see what's going on. I also can export it. You know, if you want to study this later, I can export onesie twosies or I can grab everybody and then just right click export and it'll send it out to a comma uh, separated CSV file. You know, I don't know, perhaps you can import that into some tool that can read it or you can kind of take a look at it yourself and aggregate and see kind of what the heck's going on with everybody. All right. So really, really cool stuff that you can do there. And the other thing that's really neat about this too, if I minimize this, is we have a management interface in the web that we can get into. So you actually could just log into the web interface and come in here. And there's all sorts of things that you can do in here. It's not quite yet a feature parity of the Parallels Admin Console, but it's getting closer. So you can do a lot of the infrastructure management and so forth. But just real quick, you could log in and go into sessions. And then here's all those sessions too. And then I can do pretty much everything that I was doing before in here to see what's going on, right, in terms of their environment. And then really cool is I can grant this web interface limited to just sessions to perhaps certain end users. So maybe if you've got a power user, they could log in and, and look through this stuff and they kind of help you out, right? They could uh, like disconnect or reset a uh, stuck session or something like that, or kind of take a look at this or just whatever. And furthermore, and this is something that not many people do, I can effectively do this by department. So if you've got a power user in like the uh, accounting department, I could maybe help them draft them to kind of help me out, right? Okay, you can do some session management, but, but only for your department, right? I don't want you messing around with HR or anything. But for all you accountants, yeah, you can kind of run with it and, and help those guys out or something like that. So very, very cool uh, things that you can do here in terms of session management. Okay, so let's shift gears here and we'll talk about the self-service remote PC. The first thing you want to do is create some integration with your mail server, which you can do within RAS, so administration and then mailbox. Fill out these um, information here, your location, your mail server, username, password, all that, um, your addressing. And you can send a test email as well to make sure this is working. Once that, com once that is completed, I'll, uh, if you go over to farm, and then we can do the rest of the configuration here. So the process is once the mail server is set up, we're going to enable the feature and then you'll send out an email to the end users and then they'll do the rest of it from there. So you don't have to actually do anything. So I'll go to farm and remote PCs and up in the top right is the tasks. I'll drop that down and click on self-service enrollment and then I can choose, you know, to turn off, turn on. It's, you can register only during a certain time period. There's a hash that we're going to use for security, but I'll go ahead and send out a test email and I'll just send it to myself and you can see they get that little hash that's in there. You can copy and paste that. And they're also going to get this, um, whatever you put in here. This is the default, but you can adjust that a little bit if you want. Okay, so I didn't click send and it went ahead and sent it. So let me go ahead and get out of this. And then I'll show you what the email 
actually looks like for the end users. So this is it. Obviously, I didn't modify it at all. But you click on that download installer. That'll put the agent on it. And then you run that command below. So you'd open up a command prompt or a um, or PowerShell or something. So you do this on your remote PC. So this is the PC that I should be working on at work. And I'm just going to go ahead and if I clicked on that link, it would uh, start the download. And then it would download the installer for me. So there it is. And once that gets downloaded and it's on my system, I don't have to interact with it directly. I just do a copy paste. So like I said, a command prompt. I'm just going to use PowerShell here. Um, just go into PowerShell and paste. Uh, one thing you probably do want to do though is make sure that you're in the right directory, right? So if the downloads isn't in the pathing directory for Windows and won't know what you're talking about. So you need to switch over to that directory and um, the code is, the installer is actually there. So I'll go ahead and paste that installer and then run it. And this just kind of happens. The end user doesn't have to do anything else once this starts going, right? So it runs, it adds the agent, it registers it, it sets the permission within Parallels RAS and we're good. And this is again, all based on the security stuff that you did earlier in that hash. So not just anybody could do this. Okay. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. So I'll go back to my uh, Mac. Let's pretend I'm working at home. I've already logged into Parallels. I've got some apps that were available to me, but I want to remote control my PC. So I'll do a refresh and it's available for me because I ran that. And then I just go ahead and launch this just like I would anything else. And here we go. I'm logging into my home PC from here. There it is. All right, so like I said, very easy, pretty straightforward. You can control whether they can or can't do that, and you can in fact see that I am I am on my Mac. I'm not just cheating you and showing you a different screen here. Okay, so let me log out of this so I don't forget later, and then let's shift gears again, and we'll take a look at the Azure Virtual Desktop. So I've already done a lot of the backend work um, on the Azure and creating the integration and publishing this. I just wanted to show you uh, kind of the end user experience because that's about all we have time for today. There's more information, like I said, training on the advanced training and obviously on our website, videos and things of that nature. So to do this, I need to switch over to my uh, Windows client. This is again a Windows client. I'll refresh it and then there's my W10 desktop just showed up and I'll go ahead and launch it. And then what's happening is that we are actually um, interacting with the Windows Virtual Desktop service up in Azure. And because, remember, when we provision this, we set it up as standard, it's going to use the WVD services. So it's going to give us a password prompt right here. If I chose advanced, it makes it a little bit more seamless to the end user and they wouldn't see that. But this way they get to... Um, I set it like that just so we can kind of understand what's happening because we actually are kind of leaving parallels at this point and moving into the WVD service. And, and there's the desktop. I bumped the resolution down so we could see the different windows here. Okay, so that was a full desktop, an Azure Virtual Desktop. I also can do applications. So if I go back to the RAS console and go down to Publishing and then Add, let's do an application this time, again, from a Windows Virtual Desktop. Next, uh, very similar, right, to what we're doing before, installed apps, yep, from here. And then it's going to query the Windows inventory if your app is registered there. And let's see what's on the system. And oh, it's got the Office Suite. Let's pick, um, let's just grab one. Oh, Word's down here at the bottom. So I'll publish Word. How exciting. Okay, next, next. And there we go, finish. And then I'll go ahead and click Apply. And then now it's published and available for my end users. So if I go back to my Windows Workstation and refresh my, uh, my client here, there's Word. So I can go ahead and launch Word. And again, this is coming from WV De v Desktop. And remember, we left it at standard. So it is going to prompt me again for the password. And this is kind of that handoff back and forth between the WVD system. You can hide a lot of this again by choosing advanced. And remember, there's also the advanced with the fallback to this if you have to for whatever reason. Log in. It's starting my app on the desktop and configuring the remote session. And then here we go, there's Office. I'm in Microsoft Word, right? So um, I can launch one of the predefined templates here. It's again, that very same experience that the end users would be used to in RAS, the seamless window for just Word. Uh, you notice down there, it's actually using the Microsoft. If you look at the little icon, it's using the remote app. Um, that's another reason it's Windows only because Microsoft uses Remote App, which only works for Windows. And if I launch IE, that's got the Parallels logo because that's actually using our own shell. So I can kind of bounce back and forth between both, right? 
And particularly if I had on that advanced uh, option instead of the standard, the users would have a very, uh, very seamless experience between uh, WVD and traditional remote desktop services. So they could use RDSH for most things, but perhaps use WVD for application compatibility. Okay, so that was Azure Virtual Desktop. Now it's time for the dynamic session resolution. Okay, here we go. Check this out. Now I'm connecting from a uh, Windows workstation to a RAS remote desktop and look how I can dynamically resize and drag this around. It just changes shape right on the fly. Isn't that really cool? Yeah, I can just kind of move it all over the place. I even dragged it to the side and then I created two windows side by side like that. Really, really cool. Very powerful new feature that, like I said, was really exciting about, excited to tell you about. Okay, and then this is a really cool feature, the accelerated file retrieval. Essentially, um, up until version 18, we were relying on just the basic RDP file transfer stuff, right? It could take a long time to actually upload, download files, browse even your local file system uh, from a remote app or from a VDI instance or whatever. We've dramatically improved that. And to do that, I want to, uh, to demonstrate that, I've got a quick little uh, video here I want to show you. Okay, so on the left is the drive redirection cache off, right, native dra RDP or parallels RAS without the drive cache, right, so, or maybe an older version of RAS, and on the right, it's turned on. And you can see just the dramatic difference between these two. Just to enumerate the file system and be able to browse the files on the left without that cache turned on, took um, five and a half, almost six minutes to do that. On the right, we're able to do that in less than a minute. And then once we're actually in the folder system, once it's cached, um, you can see how very quickly we can kind of browse, save files, um, and so forth. I think this video actually kicks off in a moment and starts just scrolling up and down the file tree. I mean, look how quick that is once it kind of got set. So a dramatic improvement um, that's now available out here starting again in version 18. All right, and then for the last topic, here's the Parallels client on the Mac with the M1 chipset, you can see right here. So we've got the client ported to it, so it's just a full function client. I can log in, you know, we've got the Google Authenticator set here, so I get challenged for my OTP. And then here's my apps to my desktop, running Windows 10 on the Mac with an Apple M1 chipset, right, using Parallels RAS. So very, very cool. And it's, of course, it's full function Windows, right, from a remote desktop, just like you'd know and uh, always love. Get the start menu. I can go back and forth to multitask. I can do just the full desktop. I can do an app. You can do multiple apps. There it is. So yeah, anyway, bottom line is we've ported it over to, or the Parallels client for the Mac. We've ported that also to the M1 chipset, so you can run the latest and greatest Mac and still get to all your remote applications. Okay, and with that, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Um, if, I think we've been answering most of the questions as we went along, but if you've got any additional ones, now's kind of the chance. But we're kind of wrapping up the audio here. Um, so thank you all so much for attending. Um, you know, so give us a try. We offer a free trial. Just go to the Parallels.com website. You can download that. You can connect with our sales team to get some more information. We offer free training. There's a wealth of documentation and knowledge base articles. Um, at the parallels.com site. So please go ahead and do that. And again, thanks so much for attending. I'll hang out for just a few more minutes to answer some questions in the chat window. Um, but once I've got those cleaned out, I'm going to kind of go ahead and end the session today. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day.